Hello everyone, this is Anna with Passions of Paper. Um, so I have been working these last few weeks on making these big journals. I would call these tomes because they're just that big. Um, what happened was I started making my next writing journal here and it's just huge. And I loved it so much that I was like, well, I feel like maybe someone out there might also like my style. So I decided to make a couple more of these uh, nautical deep sea themed journals um, in the, they're very grungy and vintage um, with these papers, layered papers and stuff. So I've gotten most of the work done on these, but now they need tassels. Um, if you remember one of my other videos, I'm showing off my personal journals. I always have tassels and this was the last one I made for this journal. I made this tassel and, um, some of these fabrics, uh, these are seam binding that I hand dyed and crinkled, um, to add more texture and variety to my tassels um, so I just wanted to um, share how I make stuff for my tassels because I've got these three big journals that all need tassels and they're gonna need to be pretty big to match the size of the journals so I have to make quite a bit of stuff and I don't really have a lot of stuff left over this is the last of it right here um, so I need to make more stuff so this is my first time making a tutorial um, I hope you guys will just bear with me um, I am NOT a professional youtuber I just make junk journals because I love it and I want to share it with people and I know that people want to know how to make other stuff and they've been asking me to make tutorials on things that I make, so I figured I'd just give it a shot. What could it hurt, really? Um, so, I, now the thing is, is I don't do this all the time, so I don't 100% know what I'm doing. But that's kind of what's fun about the process, is I'm literally just playing. Every time I do stuff, I'm playing, because I don't write down specific notes of what I'm doing, and I don't measure stuff out. So my results are always different, and and it's just really fun to work with. Um, so the last time, uh, where'd it go? This is the seam binding I use. <coughs> Excuse me. I guess I should take this sticker off. I don't know. It's um 100% rayon, woven edge, um, natural colored seam binding so it's just this plain stuff a huge roll of it it was a little bit pricey but this is a very big roll this will make lots and lots of tassels in the future so I was okay with spending the price on that um, I went ahead and and already made my got all my materials together so I made bunches I've got three of these bunches of seam binding and I have um, these flower sack towels, I tore, uh, strips off from those, and I've got these different containers because I'm going to be doing different colors. This is, um, a lot of just random stuff that I've pulled from my stash that I'm just going to be doing, um, a dark coffee stain to. That color is not coming out right. Let me try to fix that. This video is all about color, so that's still, the blues are coming out really, really blue. Um, this is more of an aqua, but hopefully you'll be able to still see the results of what I make pretty well. This one, I'm going to make a dark uh, coffee stain with these reinkers. So I want some dark browns, because this was regular, this is like a regular coffee dye right here. It's a very light brown. That's coming up really yellow. I'm sorry. That's probably better. Um, 
So this was just regular coffee dyed. I'm going to do it in the darker solution and get it even darker. So I can have some lighter browns and some darker browns because I like variation in the colors. This um, is muslin here. I've got muslin in with my flower sack towels. I've got this jute string. Um, this is sari silk. I bought a roll of that on Amazon. And I've got some ship fabric here. It's uh, got, it's all nautical themed. It's got map background in it and anchors and ships in it. So I was gonna, this has already been coffee dyed once. I'm gonna coffee dye it again to make it a little stronger. This is a strip off of a shirt. Um, I coffee dyed a strip of that to make the tie for my journal. And I love the stretchiness of it. It's so fun to play with and it's a really soft feel. So I thought that might be some good material to add to a tassel. I've got some little um, clothing strings from some stretchy pants that I don't like the strings on. So I took those off. I'm just going to coffee dye and see what happens to them. I don't know if they'll get used in a tassel or not, but that's I, this is what I'm doing. I just play. And this is another pant string from some pajama pants. I've got some white lace in here that's small enough, thin enough to go into a tassel. Uh, I think that's about it in here. So yeah, that'll be a coffee dye solution. This will be coffee and re-inkers to be darker. These are going to be uh, dark blues and like a bluish green for one, I think, and a brown blue for another to make them dark enough to fit those nautical themed deep sea journals because they are grungy and vintage. They are dark. Just to give you an idea of the inside. So you can see how I, I have already coffee dyed this stuff here. and It's just grungy, grungy, grungy vintage. Um, and greens and blues and tans and browns laced throughout. So I'm trying to match that for these tassels. Um, let's see here. So I'm going to, I've got waters and I feel like I'm figuring this out every time I do it because I always do different things. So, um, just bear with me, please. I've got gloves. You definitely want gloves. And these are great, these house cleaning gloves, because I can take them off really easily and reuse them. I don't like the, uh, the other kind of gloves, the doctor kind of gloves, because when you take those off, they're kind of more of a one-time use thing. And I don't like wasting stuff. Um, so I've got, like I said, I've got these re -inkers. I've got my coffee grinds. I've got this blue, I'm so sorry guys, blue food color gel. And I've got green regular food coloring. Um, the only difference between, I don't prefer one over the other. The only thing is, is this uh, gel you need less of. So it'll last a little longer. This stuff was kind of expensive, but I do so much dying with food colors that it was okay. It's just that I didn't really buy too many different colors. So I got to make the colors that I want. Last time when I did the seam binding, this stuff here, I did, um, I don't remember specifically all the colors. I did one that was with some greens and these are some blues. Um, so these Tim Holtz Distress Sprays were great for the seam binding. Seam binding you have to do a little bit different from this stuff here. This stuff is going to be like a bath. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get started. Oh, you know what? I need something to mix this with. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got a spoon. Now I can mix the solution. So for this one, I might actually not even need this big old tub. I might be able to just do this all in the jar and then pull it out and let it dry in the tub. So let's do that. Actually, this is going to be the darker solution. Let's start with just the coffee dyed stuff. And I think I can still 
maybe squeeze this into the jar. Hopefully it's enough water. Let me grab. This one's got a little more water. I might need to add more water as I go. So like I said, I do not measure. I just have this little mason jar and I just dump some stuff in until I feel like I have the right color and consistency. Oh, I need to grab my other jar. That's not going to be enough, I don't think. So I'm going to use some vintage photo in here. This is my lighter brown, so I don't want it to be too dark. Maybe that's too much. Let's start with less, and I can always add more if I want more. And I'm going to grab another bottle of coffee grounds. Uh, that's going to take me a minute, so I'll be right back. Okay, I got a new bottle. I usually do all this out on my kitchen counter, but I don't know how I'd be able to film out there, so I'm trying to squeeze it all into my little desk workspace here. So I just hope this works out. Oh gosh. Okay, that's probably enough of that, but I might need more water because this is going to be a lot of fabric. Actually, I probably won't need more water. Um, yeah, we'll just play and see what happens. You know what? I'm going to use this jar. These, these instant coffee jars are great to keep and reuse with your crafting. So, now I'm going to start sticking stuff in there. And I'll just monitor as I go. So sorry. If it needs um, more water, and then if I do more water, it'll probably need more coloring. Yeah, I'm going to need some more water. And because I'm doing it this way, I'm going to end up putting a lid on it and shaking since there's already fabrics in here. That looks good. Now, I should be able to fit the rest of this in there. Yep, that fit beautifully. So I'm going to let that soak up the coffee stain for a bit. And after maybe an hour, I'll pull it out with, with the gloves on and wring it out over the sink and then just hang it over something to dry. And when it's dry, it's ready to go. So I will set this one aside. Now I've got this darker stuff I want to make, and this one's even less, so um, I think this water might actually just be fine. So add some coffee, and my dark reinker. it's a ground espresso. You can get it pretty dark without the different reinkers. 
if you just use lots and lots of coffee or if you just use extra of a lighter reinker. Also, you can get it darker by dyeing it one time and then letting it dry out and dyeing it again. I have done that with papers and other fabrics, so I know it works. Definitely one darker than that. So let's do some more of this. Add some vintage photo to round it out. Oops, got that on me. This stuff does stain your hands for like two or three days, so maybe even a little longer. So, but I don't use gloves for all of it. I love working with my bare hands. I hate covering up. So, I always get stained. I just try to minimize it and not have my hands be this color by the time I'm done. I think I still want it darker than that, so I'm just going to add some more of everything. I want a good dark brown to be able to add variations in the color. And who knows, maybe I won't like what it looks like when it's all done. And that's okay. I'll just set it aside and save it for another project that where I might want whatever is created out of this. That's why I'm making so many different colors and uh, dyeing lots of different types of fabrics. They do not dye equally. I have learned that. Let's see what that looks like. Hmm. I think I might just take that a little bit darker because I love this color but once you wring it out it's not this color it's lighter than that so that means if I make this darker I'll, I should be able to get that color when I do wring it out Alright, this is looking really good and dark, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in with that. So what I'm using here, this is just one of those little two cup mason jars. I filled it with about a cup of water. And I just add and add and add until I feel like I have the color that I want. Look at that. That is just beautiful. A beautiful dark brown. That is going to be so pretty. I've never made anything this dark before. I just got this ground espresso reinker. And um, not too long ago, got this vintage photo. And the vintage photo was gorgeous, especially mixed with the coffee grounds. But I was wanting to make some darker stuff, so that's why I got the ground espresso. And look at my hands, I'm already getting covered. Um, I had a baby wipe around here. And now it's... Okay, here it is. It doesn't help a lot, but... I get it fast enough it doesn't it sinks into my skin a little less and now I need to clean up my splatters I am messy when I'm doing my grungy vintage crafting I get splatters everywhere that is typical crafting for me um, which you guys will actually be seeing pretty soon because people are requesting tutorials of how I make stuff um, where'd it go I made this grungy vintage journal um, and people want to know how I make this stuff so I was wanting to make some more of these 
So I'm going to be doing tutorial, a tutorial on that later. I was originally going to do a tutorial on that today, but I was trying to tell my sister how to make the seam binding stuff for tassels. And she's like, wow, that's a lot of information. You should just make a tutorial on it. And I was like, ah, I've never made a tutorial. I don't know how to do that. And I'm probably not going to be very good at it. But sure, why not give it a try? So these ones I wanted to do blues. Um, and I'm just going to do them right here in the containers. But I need to go get more water. So I'll be right back. Okay, I am back with more water. This one, remember I wanted to do a brownish blue, so I am going to go ahead. I went ahead and just filled the leftover coffee solution from this empty bottle, the empty jar. And I'm going to add some more coffee to that. I don't want it to be too strong. I definitely want it to be more of a blue. And I just got to experiment and see what comes up. Oh, that is beautiful. Wow. Look at that color. That not that didn't show up very well. Now for the seam binding, you don't get that soaked, so that's why that's not in these. It's a different process. Let's see. That is such a beautiful blue. Wow. Yeah, I think that'll fit. That'll be a good color. I'm probably after this video, I'm gonna be making more materials and um, more different, uh, more colors, um, just to give myself plenty of options to play with when I'm creating the tassels, because I like big fluffy tassels, and they have to feel right, you know, so if these colors don't give me enough for it to feel right, and when you've got all these supplies, you can literally create and make whatever you can imagine, so why stop? So I'm going to go ahead, I think I just, I'm just going to pour some of this in here, actually, maybe I'll pour it in here. And then I might actually just keep the solution and add some blue, or some more brown to it to make it darker for the next batch. And then I can do a plain a plain blue later. This color is so pretty. Spoon helps a lot. I'm actually not having to put on my gloves so far for this. I thought I'd be taking, putting those gloves on and off the whole video, and that would be annoying and take a lot of time. So that's going to set aside. Honestly, I could ring this out as is. It might not be very different from between now and an hour from now. I have wrung stuff out immediately after sticking it in the solution and letting it dry. I'm just going to experiment now and see if letting it sit in that solution for a little longer does maybe make it a little darker. Going to just add a few drops. I don't want this too strong. I feel like the brown is actually not making this a, a vintage blue. It's making it more of a green. But that's okay, because green fits in with this too. So, we've got this. That's not really that much different. So, let's see here. I'm going to, I don't know, do some of this. The vintage photo. Vintage photo is more of a red brown, so maybe that'll change how this color is coming out.
All right, now I'm bringing it back to the blue. I just, I guess I just needed more blue. It's always playing and experimenting when it comes to making stuff for junk journals. And that is definitely one of the things that is great about junk journals. I'm just doing stuff I would never otherwise normally do. And it's so much fun. Look at that blue. That is beautiful. Okay. So, yeah. That, I think that will complement this so well. This this is more of a teal, dark, vintage teal. And this is more of a uh, navy blue, maybe. Or a marine blue. So, I'll go ahead and just put that in there, actually. Yeah, because I don't want to use up all the solution. I want to save some for a spray bottle that I'll be using um, to do the seam binding with. So I'm just going to give it a bath. This would be, this part right here would be easier with gloves on, but I can still do it with a spoon. Now this one, I probably, it's really dark, so I probably don't need this one to soak. I'll go ahead and put it in a different container for now, just to not contaminate stuff. And then I can use this in the spray bottle. I can use two different solutions and um, I can add some more browns to that one to change it up. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on. And wring that out, get all the excess liquid out, so I can have plenty to use for the next stuff. See how much came out? That almost filled it all right back up. Now go through and make sure there's no white spots before you put it aside and call it a day. Sometimes there's some hidden white spots where the material's thicker. Looks good. Alright, so I'm going to set that there. I'm going to wipe this off and I'm going to go ahead and wring out the other one as well. Make sure you're wearing clothes that you don't care too much for. I mean, it is just food coloring, so it probably will wash out. Oh, my spoon fell in that tub. But I'm not 100% sure. Oh, so far, I have not gotten stuff on my clothes when I do this. All right, see how much lighter that is once you wring it out? And now look at the different color variations. This is why when I'm done, I might make more colors because... You can make a whole rainbow of colors, especially when you add brown to the food coloring. It really changes what it can be. Alright, I lost my baby wipe again. I need to clean the surface so I don't start getting it on stuff. Plus the seam binding I will be doing on the surface. So I definitely want to start with a clean surface and I'll have to wipe in between each color. So I've already got two colors here that I can play with. I've got three bunches of seam bindings set aside. One of them is going to be for a good dark brown, but maybe I'll make another one later for a good dark brown and actually uh, take some, I might just take some of that solution of the dark brown I already made earlier and do that one. The only problem with this is I only have one spray bottle. So I will have to stop and clean this out in between each one. Because last time I did this, I just used these directly. These Distress Oxide Sprays, which already are a spray bottle. And I used like two or three different colors. And it gave a nice uh, gradation to the coloring.
like you can see in this brown like here it's more of a it's got like some greenish color to coloring to it and this one's more of a red brown right here and it just changes throughout and um yeah you can see it in the green too so um this i think i'm gonna still actually mix in some of the Tim Holtz oxide sprays. Well, this one's not an oxide spray. This is a new one I just got. I don't know if there's a difference between, <clears throat> excuse me, just the Distress spray stain and the oxide spray stains. This is my first time getting the Distress spray stain, so I've actually never used it yet, and I don't know what that'll do, if it's how different that is. But I, in my head, it doesn't seem, it would make sense that it's not that much different. So. <clears throat> Alright, we've got this here. I'll start off with the bluer color. I could use a funnel, but eh, I'll just pour. You know what? I don't think I'll rinse this out in between uses. I'll just dump it back out into the bath and dump the next one in because a little bit of mixing will not hurt it. They're made out of the same things, just different amounts. So this is the part where we're going to want gloves. Let's get some stuff out of here that I do not need. I'm going to need some room and I need access to ooh, that. That just looks so beautiful. I think that might be ready to just wring out and let it start drying and that'll free up that solution for one of these seam binding piles. I've got three of these here, but I gotta keep them away. I don't want them to get splatters. Um, so this one I'm going to use maybe chipped sapphire with the blue. So this one's more of a blue, and then so, you, so I'll be using more of the blue stuff. I don't know. I just, maybe we'll start with one spray and see how it looks. Um, one spray won't hurt it too much. So if I decide I don't like it, I can uh, not use it. Okay, I think that's everything I need. I also have, um, for the brown one, I might do some of this antique bronze spray, which gives it a metallic-y sheen. I think that brown one that I just showed you, that's leftovers of my last time, I had used this. Um, so that was really, gave a really pretty effect. And then I've also got sheer shimmer, so I can use this on any, any color. And it's just, um, glitter, just adds glitter to it. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this. This will be my base. And basically what you want to do is keep it a little pile and you just spray. You don't want it to get on too much of it because you want to add variations. Unless you really just want it one solid color. Then that's fine. Um, you want to get it so that it just gets pretty wet but not soaked. Because uh, what I'm going to be showing you after I'm done dyeing this is um, how to crinkle it. Because... Plain, straight seam binding is pretty boring. So I just spray and toss it around. Now I want it darker than that, so I'm going to try this chipped sapphire. See how this looks. Ooh, that's dark. That is beautiful. That's definitely... Oh, that's going to be great for this. I don't want all of that to be too dark. So I'm going to try some Salty Ocean. And maybe it needs a little brown, so I'm going to add some vintage photo to it. This is the spray, not the reinker. Yeah, maybe not too much of that. I'm going to kind of mop up what's on here, help that soak into it. 
Make sure you're just tossing it around so you get all the different parts of it. Let's go back to some of this blue as the base that I'm using. Help blend what's in there. There's still, I'm still seeing some white spots, so I need to give that some attention. Oh, that is looking great. Do you see all the different color variations in there? Well, now imagine when it's all crinkled and springy, and it, so when it's crinkled, it's tightened up on itself. This is a great color to add to my little collection over here. Um, I'll show, once I get these gloves off, I'll show you what, what you do to make that stuff crinkle. But I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next color. So I'm going to dump this one out back into the basin here. Clear out this, the spray head and pour in some of this greener solution. I don't really have uh, green distress sprays, so um, that's why I'm making this stuff out of food coloring, because I don't have everything. So I'm making it, and that's why I'm showing you guys. You can just make whatever you want. Now see that's some of the old blues coming out, which actually I think might be kind of nice for this. Now I'm getting to the greener part. Um, I'm, I've got one green distress spray. I'm going to pull that out. Let's see. Peeled paint. Not, not a very good dark green color. But I think when I add some browns to this... Ooh, wow. That was strong. Let's get that mixed up. I think when I add some brown to this, that will help a lot. And add some dark blues too go with the darker stuff to help even out with help even out the brighter stuff um i've got some walnut stain up that's a little darker than vintage photo hopefully you guys are able to hear me all right i i've never crafted while trying to talk to my phone so i'm not sure how the volume's coming out this one, I think I want to give this some of the uh, antiqued bronze. I feel like it needs a little shimmer. Make sure that's good and shaken up. Really loving how that's coming out. I want just a little bit of it to have some of this dark blue. And this uh, seam binding here, this is going to be long enough to make like three or four tassel um, strips. So I can cut off what I need from this. Oh, that is coming out so pretty. All the different variations in it. And then the metallic sheen. I don't know if the camera's picking that up at all, but in person this is just gorgeous. Nice and different from that blue. So this one's got more green. You can see the difference there. All right, and then this last one I'm going to do with this brown here. So let's empty this out. Clear the spray head. Gonna pour some of that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and spray to get it started into the basin here. So now it should be brown and ready to go. Dark brown. I'm gonna start off with some blue. 
and then cover it with the brown. That way you'll be able to see some of this blue underneath the brown. I think I'll do a little glitter spray on that too. Gosh, I almost just want to do a blue. Look at this. Just that, uh, what is it? The chipped sapphire. That is a nice dark blue already. Oh man, look at that. Can you see the glitter? It looks like a starry night. That is just gorgeous. Now adding some browns. Oh, this is going to be so great. I just got that chipped sapphire, so I have not really done much with dark blues um, until now. That's why I'm making this stuff now, because I really need darker stuff, the darker blues. For my, uh, pr my previous mermaid journal and my starfish journal, my personal one, um, those ones were lighter. They were like teals and aquas and sea foam greens. Wow. That is just amazing. I really wish you guys could see what this stuff looked like in person because cameras never do it justice. So those are my three colors for now. Like I said, later on I might make some more. But now I'll show you how to make it crinkly. This stuff can literally just be left here to dry out. I can use, I can set it on my mat and use a heat gun on it to help dry it faster or I can just hang it up somewhere. As long as it's been squeezed out enough so it's not dripping, and my stuff is squeezed out enough so it won't drip and make a mess, um, then yeah, you can just hang it up and let it dry for a day or two. It's winter here, so I cannot put stuff outside to quickly dry in the sun. That's not an option for me. It is, uh, we've got lots of snow outside. So, um, I might just be impatient and use a heat gun so I can start making tassels today, but we'll see because I also wanted to do a tutorial on that, um, that, gr the grungy vintage journal. People really want to see how I make those and I was wanting to make more, which means I may as well make the tutorial while I make them. Um, so the next step for the crinkling is to use Ziplocs. Or some kind of baggie. That's what I use anyways. And you just take it and you wad it up as tight as you can get it. And like the more crunched it looks, the better. You don't want it to be a clean wad. And then you stuff it down into the corner here of the baggie. And then I just tie it off and try to make sure it'll be a tie that'll stay... I mean, I just twist and make sure it's just going to stay. Uh, so you want it to be as small and crunched as you can possibly get it. The more crunched, the better. Um, I think I might actually be able to fit two in this one bag. That way I'm not using lots of bags. Let's see. These are just little snack-sized Ziplocs. Because you don't need much. You just need a way to keep it crunched in there. So, I've got two of those going there. And I just got to do the third one. This, this is just amazing. Oh my gosh. It's like I made this. You can make this. You can make any color. Just get a few resources. Just get those little tiny bottles of food coloring from the store. And get a little bottle of instant uh, coffee. So you're spending like maybe $5. And you can make this. And just get like a spray bottle. A cheap, a cheap spray bottle. Any size. Whatever's the cheapest. And make your solutions and spray. And you can use your basins. Uh, to if you want to use that if you can only get the one spray bottle and make your solution in that just that one then you use these different basins or jars dump your solution out and then pour in a new solution and that way for that one seam binding you can still pretty easily make one seam binding with different colors 
with just one spray bottle and not half you don't have to have all this stuff this is just letting me be lazy really um, now I bought these big bottles of food coloring because I have gone through so much food coloring I've gone through so many of those little bottles and I got tired of it so I just bought the big bottles because I do so much food coloring stuff I do papers I make all my own food colored papers of all these different shades and I do I food color dye all the fabrics that I look, look at that look even this baby wipe I might have to keep that and let that dry out that looks amazing let's get both sides here get what's on my gloves add that to it I've seen people do stuff with baby wipes but I've never had a baby wipe look so good after using it so I might actually be able to do something with that because that looks so great all right so now the next steps of these you let them sit in this little twisted position this crunched up corners of the bags all twisted up keep them like that for like 12 to 24 hours um, and then you take them out and kind of spread it out a little bit if you have a heat gun or a hair dryer uh, do some of that on it but you don't want to fully dry it um, so you can just let it sit out and air dry a bit because basically you don't want this to stay wet in this baggie for more than 24 hours because it can start growing stuff um, so you want it to let it breathe and when it's starting to feel drier um, but not but still wet not wet wet but like not wet so that it'll like soak through your uh, clothes or anything but dry enough that it feels um, like it won't really grow too much then you scrunch it up again and that'll give it new crinkles um, and then you just do the same thing so you just scrunch it up again and then you put it in the baggie and twist it as tight as it can go and keep it there for another 12 to 24 hours and then when that's done you just do some more drying and by that point that should be done oh goodness I am covered so that is how you make this and I'll go ahead and show you what the end result looks like like I showed you earlier it's this plain old seam binding here comes out like this it's just it looks amazing in a tassel and it's stretchy and bouncy it's fun to play with so um, maybe I will go ahead and pause this video and use the heat gun on the other stuff that I made so I can just show you my variations that I've of colors that I've made um, and then that'll be the end of this video. So, hold tight. Uh, I just wanted to pause that, uh, stop the drawing because I just remembered something. Um, you do need to be careful if you're when you're making this stuff uh, to not. Oh, sorry, hold on. All right, so you do want to be careful when you're doing this to not let the fabrics when they're wet touch the other food colored fabrics. Um, these might not hurt each other too much, but when you're doing like a light color with a dark color or anything that's got uh, coffee grounds in it, touching something that doesn't have coffee grounds in it, it it'll they like soak it up and then it totally changes and it can kind of uh, make it look a little ugly, I think, because I've had that accidentally happen. So like for example, I just had some of that dark brown solution touch here. So you can see how that's got that brown in there now, um, which like some of it can be okay and turn out as happy accidents, but from most of my experience when it comes to food coloring and coffee dyeing, uh, when they touch and mix, it's not that pretty. So try not to let it happen too much. Back to drying. Alright, as you can see right here is a spot that I was just talking about avoiding 
the regular coffee dyed stuff was touching my blue dyed stuff and it absorbed some of the coffee dyed stuff and I don't know if that's just because I used like these flower sack towels and maybe that's what's doing it but it did uh, get a spot on there thankfully it's not too big but that's exactly what I was just talking about trying to avoid alright so um, I think this is uh, dry enough to go ahead and show you guys the results this is the regular coffee dyed stuff this is still pretty wet, but I mean, you guys have seen coffee dyed stuff. It doesn't really do too much um, for these darker things. But it took this uh, bright, and again, the color does not come up right at all. Uh, it took this bright um, blue, sorry, silk, and it vintaged it down for me, so it'll better fit that theme. This here is, uh, this stuff's amazing. This is the uh, dark brown that I did, and um, some of these pieces uh, have stitching. Look how pretty that looks. The light, the stitching came out lighter. Um, so this stuff came out really, really dark, really nice. This will go great with with the blues. Um, and then this was the greenish blue that I made. And this was the darker blue that I made. So you can see how the different materials give you different um, uh, var variations of the food coloring solution as well. Like lace, especially lace, always comes out much lighter. The jute, which is already a natural brown, comes out more green. Um, so that's all I'll be able to show you in this because this is like a one to two day process to make the seam binding but I was able to show you what I had left from my last results so you won't unfortunately be able to see the um, finished results of those colors but if you um, hang tight um, I, I'll be doing flip throughs of those C journals that you guys saw at the opening of this video because I will be making flip throughs to sell it when I add those to my Etsy shop um, so, I mean, I just, I still have more work to do on those, so that'll take some time. Um, but I'm hoping by the end of the week, they'll be done and ready to list in my Etsy shop, and I'll be doing a flip-through video for that. Um, and like I said, I wanted to do a, um, tutorial video on that vintage grungy journal that I have. And so hopefully that'll be coming up soon. I was going to try to tackle it today if I can get the time. Um, it depends on how much longer my husband's willing to watch the kids for me. So, we'll see. Alright, well, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and yes, I did hand dye. I do the drying by hand. So, as you can see, the color does stain. Um, some of this will wash off, but not very much. Um, yeah. Uh, so, again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something from this. I feel like the whole point of junk journals is to create and share. Um, because so many people can be creative in so many different ways and that's why we need to just share. Um, so other people can learn how to do all the different creating processes and create beautiful things as well. And, um, so I'm, as much as I don't really like doing tutorial videos, I, that's a selfish reason. Um, and I need to share and people want to learn. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.